What's up guys, it's Michael, and today I'm beyond stoked to take you behind the scenes on one of my favorite songs I've ever made, Murphy's Law. I don't care what happens, I'll just be here laughing, life isn't helpful, but at least it isn't empty. Before we get too deep into it, if you're a fan of my music, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. I'm constantly posting new songs, new lyric videos, and production breakdowns like this, so it really helps out small channels like mine. If you haven't heard of Murphy's Law, it's this expression that if anything can go wrong, it will go wrong, and at the worst possible time. I like to think of myself as a prepared optimist. I always hope for the best, but it seems like whenever I start doing well in life and I start seeing a little bit of success, life always just kind of throws a curveball my way. So what I've learned to do is just kind of roll with the punches. And when things go wrong, which they inevitably will, you just have to learn to kind of laugh at your situation and take life with a sense of humor. That's kind of what this song is about. So let's dive into the production. First thing that you hear is this kind of warbly glitchy sound. Tell you a secret. This all just kind of happened by accident. When I started the song, I wanted to try something kind of weird and out of the box. So I went around with a voice memo and I recorded the same note on a bunch of different instruments. So I recorded a piano, a guitar, a couple different guitars, a ukulele, a trumpet, and just like a bunch of random instruments all playing the same note. I stitched them all together and then I ran it through a bunch of crazy filters and it ended up sounding like this. And that plays in the background throughout the entire verse. For the intro, I took that exact same sound and then I went into Shaper Box, Stutter and Repeat, and I just went through these presets until I found something that sounded really cool. Also, there's a little Easter egg here in the beginning. I like to put my wife in all of my songs. In this one, because the first lyric is Tell You a Secret, we thought it'd be fun to have her go like, hey, psst. Hey, psst. Hey, psst. Tell you a secret. Let's jump into this verse. Something you might notice about this verse is that the groove feels just a little bit off the grid, like the kicks and the snares aren't hitting exactly where you'd expect them. In order to get that funky groove, I actually started by beatboxing the rhythm that I heard in my head that I wanted the drums to play. This is that beatbox with kind of a formant shift down. I took all the drums and I lined them up to where my beatboxing was. These snares, for instance, aren't hitting right on this downbeat. They're kind of early. Some of these kicks are on the grid, but then some of them, you can see that this is in between two beats here. So I started with this kick drum, added this organic sounding rim shot, but it didn't have enough punch to it. So I ended up adding a bunch of trappy layers. Instead of a traditional hi-hat or shaker, I actually just went shh, shh, shh into the mic. Here we've got some hyper pop hats. Last but not least, we've got this little guy here. I made that by just starting with silence actually, and then I went into shaper box. This is this preset called 16th rhythm. And then I threw filter freak on it. Next up, we got the bass. This is just a bass I played with the pick. I actually sampled the pick hitting the strings live. Layers together to sound like this. For the main instruments, I played an acoustic guitar. I have that synth we talked about earlier made out of the different samples. Organy sound from Lo-Fi Glow and Contact. And this was heavily inspired by The Reason by Hoobastank. Every time the vocals stop, I add this instrumental bell just to keep the interest going. I wanted the verse to feel kind of reverby and washed out, and then when we get to the pre-chorus, it's very in your face and dry. The pre-chorus keeps those same drums, same acoustic guitar plucks, and then there's this really glitchy organic pluck sound. Played these notes on acoustic guitar. Some compression, OTT, some EQ, taking out all the highs and lows. At the very end, I'm using this plugin called Manipulator to shift the formant down a little bit. The plugin doesn't know what to do with stereo information, kind of freaks out and creates these artifacts that actually sound pretty musical and cool. 
Now at the end of this pre-chorus, we're about to transition into some heavy guitar stacks. When I originally had it just acoustic in the verse and then all electric in the chorus, it felt disjointed. And so in order to bridge that gap, I added guitar amp feedback that builds up into that chorus. All right, it's chorus time. I wanted this whole section to have a very punchy, very in-your-face feel and kind of call back to early 2000s pop punk. I'm using a live drum kit here and just a ton of heavy electric guitars. Everything hits at the same time all together in unison. We start with the kick drum here. We also have crashes hitting on every note. On the second half, we bring in the snare. Last but not least, we have this really crunchy, bit-crushed hi-hat, and I have an auto panner that's just bringing it from the left to right. Played a live bass with an overdriven amp. Now we're getting into my favorite part, the guitars. The guitars are actually three different layers that I've put together. I started with power chords. And those are panned hard left and right. Then higher up on the fretboard, I played some mid chords. Then at the very top of the fretboard, we've got these really high inversions. I took those high inversions and I ran them through a plugin called Crystallizer. But even after all of that, it still just didn't feel massive enough to me. So I added simply just white noise. Next up, I added an organ. For whatever reason, organ layers super well with electric guitar, and when you put them together, it sounds like the same instrument, just a little bit fuller. Finally, on the last part of this chorus, some saw waves on the top. All together, we got this. Over on the vocal side of things in this chorus, we have our lead vocal. I don't care what happens. Doubles panned left and right. I don't care what happens. Artificial high octave. An organic low octave. I don't care what happens. And then some harmonies. I don't care what happens. Life was never really For the reintro into verse two, I bring back that Hoobastank the Reason bell tones. <laughs> Verse 2 is essentially the same as verse 1 with just a couple more layers added. One of them is this choir of Oz. And that's probably 16 stacks of me just singing and then I throw a manipulator on there and a little bit of digitalis that's just kind of pixelating it. Moving into pre-chorus 2, I'm always looking for ways to take something we did the previous time around and just add a few layers to it to make it sound more full and keep the development going. A lot of that heavy lifting is done in the vocals. I have just a ton of stacks in this pre-chorus. All of the stacks are only coming in on the important words, and then in between I'm cutting it just to the lead vocal, so the contrast makes those important words feel really big. But when I think about all the times I wondered if I'd neck it out Got the lead vocal of course, doubles, the high octave, and a ton of harmony And then I have an ad lib where I'm repeating the lead vocal a quarter note afterwards I think, I think about, about, think about I brought in one more guitar layer on this pre-chorus I call it guitar on shrooms because it just feels really kind of trippy and spacey I got that sound from taking this guitar here, stretched it out to be twice the length, so you get this. Pitched it up an octave. I didn't want the transition from pre-chorus 2 into chorus 2 to feel the same as the first pre-chorus, and instead of having that feedback riser, I cut all the instruments, and then I have kind of a trippy drum loop. For the vocals leading into that transition, we have that lead vocal with the tape stop. Together somehow. Then I used Effect Rack by Sound Toys on a preset called Radio Bad Connection. Now chorus 2 just comes in all out, guns blazing, and then on top of that, we just have stacks on stacks of vocals. If I solo the vocal channel here, I don't care what happens, I'll just be here laughing. We've got lead vocals, doubles, high and low octaves, and then we have this harmony, I don't care what happens, this harmony, I don't care what happens, this one, I don't care what happens, this one, I don't care what happens, and then lastly this one, I don't 
care what happens. All right, let's move into this post chorus. <laughs> The biggest thing adding contrast in the instruments to this section are these strings. We add a layer of vocoder. And kind of a modulated effect, which gives it a very wide open feeling. I'm a big fan of subtractive production. For this bridge, I didn't feel the need to really introduce anything new so much as just take some layers away to give it a fresh feeling. We strip it back to just kind of a plucky acoustic guitar alongside this breakbeat. I'm really glad I changed this, but in the original demo, the lyric was, I might be crying in LA, but at least it's not Ohio, <laughs> like the meme. But I got a lot of friends from Ohio, and I've been to Ohio since I wrote this song, and it's actually a pretty cool, underrated place. So I decided to change the lyric, that way there's no shade. Now if you've watched my other production breakdowns, you know that I'm a big fan of using mono to stereo contrast. So this is another one of those instances where at the end of this bridge, I use just one layer that's completely mono. And then when the chorus comes back in and we use all of that stereo field, it just gives it a really big feeling. Now we just bring back everything that we ever built it to, plus some more. I think the biggest things that add extra energy to this last chorus are this ad lib layer. And you can tell that's actually pumping a little bit. That's side chaining every time the kick hits. And I'm a huge fan of gang vocals. And so I sang probably 40 different stacks of just shouting the lyrics at the top of my lungs. At the very end of this chorus, I have everything kind of build up into this white noisy, like washy sound. And then we get to the outro. This outro is composed of that warbly sound we had at the beginning, only this time it's more reverbed out. That kind of guitar on shrooms that we had in pre-chorus two, we bring that back. I added an effect from RC20 called transmitting from space. And of course, some um, soft piano. But when I think about all the times I wondered if I'd make it out. All right, guys, that's Murphy's Law. Again, this was probably one of my favorite songs from the album. I loved writing it. I love how the lyrics turned out. I loved how the production turned out. And I think it's a fun blend of kind of my modern EDM tastes combined with what I grew up on, which is early 2000s pop punk. If you haven't seen the music video for this, it's really fun and quirky. My wife made it alongside my good friend Gato. So yeah, check that out if you haven't. Make sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this. And let me know in the comments what you want to see next from my channel. All right, that's all I got for you today. Love you guys. And I'm still standing here with both feet on the ground. The pieces come together somehow. Together somehow.